Not starting the stream. Let me fix the audio. Or is it two, hour, two hours of straight video with no, no sound? It's you guys need to last night. You guys need to do black and white with the sign overlays, right? Mm -hmm. So when you're talking, so we get the. I object. To, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Someone took the, the 1989 Batman film and made it black and white with no sound and like cut to like, so like they would, he'd say, you know, you know, meet me the top of five minutes and, and then look to, and then the screen thing would be better to make it 10, just the words, right? It would, like they did the old, you know, old silent movies. It was fantastic. I just seen pieces of it. Yeah, I need to see, but yeah, someone cut it up that way. That's what I right updated now. it. There we go. All right, it's seven o'clock. We'll call this regular city council meeting to order. Please join me in pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible. All right, uh, clerk, please call the roll. Alderwoman Hatterline. Here. President Schultz. Here. Lavely. Here. Carncross. Here. Lancaster. Here. Foreman. Here. Perkins. Present. Luna. Forum is present, ma'am. Clerk, at this time, we'll open the floor for public comment for any item that's not on the agenda. If you have questions or comments about an item on the agenda, please make it known at that time, and we will recognize you. Any, any takers? Hearing none or seeing none, we'll move on to item number four. Uh, item number four is the Administration Committee meeting minutes from February 24th and March 13th, 2024. The committee's action is sought to approve the minutes as presented. Make a motion to approve the Administration Committee minutes. I'll second. I have a motion by Hannerline, second by Perkins. How much questions? Third call roll. Alderwoman Hatterline? Yes. Karen Cross? Yes. Foreman? Yes. Perkins. Yes. All ayes. Motion carries. Thank you for the Transportation Committee meeting minutes of March 6, 2024. The committee's actions requested to approve the minutes as presented. Make, Make a motion to approve. Second. Wish by Lively, second by Schultz. Any comments or questions? <coughs> Clerk, call the roll. Chairman Schultz? Yes. Lively? Yes. Foreman? Yes. Perkins? Yes. All ayes. Motion carries. Thank you. Item number six is the consent agenda 6A through 6L. Uh, is there any item on the consent agenda City Council wishes to remove from the consent agenda? Right now, I'll accept the motion to accept the consent agenda as presented. Make a motion to accept the consent agenda. I'll second. Motion by Hairline, second by Gorman. Comments or questions here? And clerk, roll the roll. Alderman Lavely? Yes. Karen Cross? Yes. Lancaster? Yes. Foreman? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Hatterline? Yes. Schultz? Yes. All ayes. Motion carries. Thank you. Item 7 is dispensed with since there is no item removed from the consent agenda. Item number 8 is a payment of the bills. Your actions requested to approve the payment of the bills in the amount of $392,189.41. Make a motion to approve the bills. Second. I have a motion by Hatterline, second by Schultz to pay the bills. Comments or questions here? Hearing none, clerk, call the roll. Alderwoman Lancaster? Yes. Foreman? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Hatterline? Yes. Schultz? Yes. Lavely? Yes. Carncross? Yes. All ayes, motion carries. Thank you. Item number nine is GW Properties uh, submitted a request. Uh, they submitted a request for the removal of required sidewalks as part of their project located at 5508 U.S. 14 Division Street. Your actions request to approve or deny the request. Is a party here present? Could you state your name and address for the record, please? Yes, yeah. Brian Rosenblum, 2211 North Elston, Chicago, Illinois. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Any questions for the petitioner? Are you the property owner? I am a owner representative. Right, okay. 
So thank you for having me here tonight. Um, my request is rather simple. Um, as we are gearing up to submit for our permits uh, for this project, the one last item that came up with our tenant Starbucks as well as ourselves is uh, the request for sidewalks on both uh, Route 14 and McGuire Road. Um, through various reviews with uh, both of our civil engineer as well as our tenant, uh, we feel that these sidewalks are unneeded um, due to the lack of connectivity anywhere in this intersection, both on our side of the street and across. Um, in addition, um, our tenant feels that it will create safety concerns due to the lack of connectivity. Um, the safety concerns stem from pedestrians not having uh, in place uh, access to the property that's currently there. So they feel that having these sidewalks removed will help uh, increase the safety that they're trying to uh, acquire for this property and project. I'll make a motion to deny. I'll second. All right, I have a motion in a second by Perkins and Gorman to deny the request. Is there any comments or questions here? I have some questions for, um, I guess, for city staff. Um, so I, I understand the petitioner's um, issue with regards to there not being other sidewalks. I know this is an issue along 14 that we're trying to address over time. Um, and I guess where are the where are the nearest sidewalks to that location and um, what are what do we anticipate in terms of um, si additional business development and additional sidewalks being put in in that area? I'm not sure who's the sidewalk. Oh, you're good. The nearest sidewalk adjacent to that area would be at Culver's, uh, just to the south. Um, that's that's the closest adjacent sidewalk. Uh, this is also in the project area where the McHenry County Department of Transportation proposes the pedestrian walkway or the multi-use path that extends from uh, Rush Creek to Rush Shadow Creek, Creek to Shadow Creek. <clears throat> so there there are near plans to start connecting those areas. Rob, do we have a timeline on when that would happen, though? That's probably five years out, right? It, it could be five years out. Uh, right now, the problem with the county is staffing. Uh, they have the money. They have the, the resources to do it. However, they need somebody to lead the project and, uh, and or some, some squeaky wheels. Well, is, is it possible um, to require some sort of bond or some other security so that at such time as it makes sense to connect sidewalks to um, to do that? Yes, what Brian and I had discussed is another option is to defer the sidewalks for a reasonable amount of time, you know, whether it be one year, two years for this side, three years for this side, what have you, uh, which they seemed agreeable to and then hold something in reserve until those sidewalks are completed. On the other side, because this was asked previously before this meeting, uh, Dunkin' Donuts, um, Gary, our the city engineer, did not uh, require the sidewalk at this time because of the grant that the city had received that goes from uh, 173 to Airport Road, I believe, along that side. So although there's no sidewalks currently, as you all know, the city does anticipate adding all these sidewalks in the near future. So with my motion to deny, the reason why I made that motion was I was the person that talked to Donovan about Dunkin' Donuts because I know they didn't put it, so I couldn't remember. So I did not see in that the only variance I remember with Dunkin' Donuts was the bailout lane that we had an issue with. So that was my fault for overseeing the sidewalk thing. But McDonald's, Culver's, and the bank all had to require to put sidewalks in, and there's nothing touching those. And what we, before we became a city council, the people before us wanted to do that with new developments so we can start doing it, especially with what we're thinking about doing in admin in the next month or two 
with the whole proposal with the residents. If we deny, we let businesses not do sidewalks, how can we do this program with the residents? I do just want to note that other than just inter interconnecting sidewalks, there's also no infrastructure at this intersection. I understand, but you're putting an infrastructure up right I'm, there. I'm talking crosswalks, signals. I understand, but also when you said it's going to be for the safety of you guys, honestly, it's less safe because there's no sidewalks there because people will be walking on 14 or McGuire Road where they'll get hit. But back to my point, there's no connecting sidewalks to. There could be, but so we're trying to do this. Okay. So we're trying to do this to get sidewalks in all the places. Unfortunately, many years before we were even on this board, city council, that happened. That's why you don't see sidewalks. But all the new developments there, you see sidewalks now. So at, to Donovan's point, we're happy to defer it if the city is requiring this. Again, we feel and our tenant feels that it's a safety issue um, and it's as simple as that Matt would you be comfortable amending your motion instead of deny to to maybe defer it or for, or, for how long I'm just afraid of what if Starbucks comes in and they go out business and well I mean there's there's no there's, well it's Donovan a, said like one or two years I mean yeah. if they're willing to do a year or two I mean there I, I don't I, think that's enough time one or two years not enough. it takes us it takes us three four years just to stuff going it seems like I would go five years I mean I can tell you this much if Starbucks is going in there they're not looking at being out in a year or two they also I mean, have a 15 year lease so I, I think we're forgetting about the original intent of the ordinance no I, I, I'm I'm just asking if there if, if you got if it's something that you'd be willing to, to, to and be flexible on I'm not saying I'm I'm for or against at this point I'm just trying to figure uh, out if that's something if you're totally against it, that's fine but I I just wanted to see where you well, guys I, I wouldn't rescind my second so. okay I'm just, I'm just concerned about that I know we have Starbucks is supposed to but they're supposed to go in over a year ago just like Dunkin Donuts was supposed to go over a year ago and Dunkin Donuts is still sitting there trying to be under construction it's the longest construction I've seen on a fast food place I, I, if, I I, I see both sides of it. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I get it. I mean, it's a lot of money that they don't want to put down right it, now, and I get it, but and I, I agree with you. I think there's a reason There's it, a reason it, why we required that. One thing we could look at separate from this is to mitigate the, t the termination points. In other words, there might be some way to make them so they just don't abruptly end, that they actually take you back to where you would have been if there wasn't a sidewalk there, for example, mm -hmm. and do, you know, and that, that does, wouldn't even necessarily have to be a permanent, uh, pavement to do that uh, because there's nothing else is permanent there you know at this it right now so this is something that perhaps the transportation committee could look at after the after the fact to make it less you know I can understand the, the claim that it, there's a certain amount of unsafety I went over and looked at that area and there's a, a trench there you know a, a deep ditch on McGuire and to get back to the to the road you would have to go down in that to, to get out so if you did use the sidewalk there there is an issue there and perhaps you could do something though like maybe put uh, a culvert there and then a walkway back to the road to where you would have been and then it would actually be safer um, you know it's something we could we could we could look at and then take it out once the connection connection is made but we have to stick to this we have to stay with what we put put in or the next guy will say exactly the same thing well he doesn't have one I'm not I don't want to put one in the whole idea of this was to get the the the, deve the developers to help us develop that area of the city with with new infrastructure including pedestrian infrastructure that was it and I don't see any reason to deviate from that. Donovan, do we have an estimate on um, the cost, of the sidewalks, both sides? Yeah, the Sorry. estimates in uh, right around a hundred grand. Okay. Um, how are we dealing with the fact that there is a, a light at that one intersection? How does that sidewalk work around that? Do we have design of what that would be like? Okay. <laughs> This is all subject to IDOT approval. Yeah. So my concern is, is that if we do something that maybe temporarily or does not enter into the curb line, 
uh, and we submit something or they submit something to IDOT, IDOT's going to throw it back and say, no, you're touching our right away. We need the ingress and egress down to the curb line into 14 McGuire Road, what have you. Department of Transportation for the county, same thing. So perhaps we get some of these answers and bring it back to Transportation Committee. And yeah, because I think this isn't, I mean, Honestly, Charlie, I agree with you 100%, but this isn't Culver's. This is at an intersection that has nothing and that we know is in with, within five years is there might be something done, but how do you deal with that intersection? How do you deal with the sidewalk there? Do you just not say, okay, put in, don't do the last 15 feet, do the rest of it? You know what I'm saying? The 15 feet coming into the intersection? Because in the end, you know, IDOT's going to have the decision on how that's done. And that could delay this project. I, I'm, and I'm not trying to. I'm simply saying maybe we put that on hold for this point, just for now. It requires some type of bond or whatever you want to do, and then figure out how this can be done. I, I, I think they should. I think this property owner should be required to do it. I'm just not sure if right now is the right time because we don't know exactly how it's going to be done. This could delay the project. I don't know how, how long. I mean, we we know how long we know how long that they messed around with um, with the county on the in and out, the right in, right out on, on McGuire Road. And I, that went around for quite a while. So, you know, again, I'm, again, my opinion of the property owner should, if not doing it, at least put a bond down on it uh, for now until it can, can be reasonably done because we don't know what the requirements are for that intersection. Don, and I, I want to get your opinion on that. I just want to say we're, we, we are happy to do that. Yeah. We're happy to put a bond up considering, as stated, there's just no plans in place currently. And again, it is a safety issue for us to install sidewalks when there's no interconnection yeah. or signals. Well, so. I mean, <clears throat> it, it, I, I'm not, we're, I don't think, I honestly see people walking. I run the business cross street, bowling alley. I see people walking down that road, or walking in the grass all the time down that road going into Walmart. And they'll, you know, and unfortunately, you know, this policy wasn't a place when Walmart was built because then we would just be able to connect your sidewalk with Walmarts, but it's not there. So I don't know how we ever get Walmart to do that freely for us. Could uh, end it just like McDonald's ends theirs at a point, Culver's ends theirs at a point. But where do you begin it? That's my, that's my question. And we, we don't know where it begins at this point. Beginning in what, the property? No. Beginning of the sidewalk. At the beginning of the sidewalk. Where From do we the, begin that at the intersection? Talking about the intersection part. Yeah. From Correct. 14 and McGuire. Correct. Unfortunately, they got to go through any, like any, any development, or they have to go through IDOT, and then they get the approval to get all that so stuff So do we done. make that a priority? I can to tell you right now, if we're going to be required to do signal work, it, it it's this is dead. I, well, no, I mean, we're happy we certainly to do a bond we, we, and work with we, you guys. We certainly don't. I, my opinion would not be would be that this developer is not responsible for the intersection, uh, you know, access for, for, for um, the pedestrians. That is an IDOT. That is a county issue. They would only be providing it to a certain point where the county and IDOT would finish it. Does that, does that make sense? But where, what is that point is what I'm saying. I, can I, okay, so just so that I understand, like, how this construction project would go with, with these sidewalks. If we were to deny this and you've got to put the sidewalks in, et cetera, IDOT has to review all of this. And if they, if IDOT comes in and says, no, you're not doing this, it's in our, it, it's in our jurisdiction, it's our right of way. And again, I'm covering this so that people understand the layman's terms of it. That would, that part of it, is that a separate part of this per building permit or is that all contingent on the full building permit? Because if IDOT says you can't put the sidewalks in and this holds up the entire building permit and it's not its own little section of it, are we now? It's they're together. Okay, so just so everybody's on the same page, if we were to deny this and they have to put in the sidewalks, and with our good intent and what we're saying is we want them to put the sidewalks in, and IDOT comes in and says, "Kibosh, you're not touching these sidewalks. You're not putting this in until we say so." This entire project gets put on hold because and we wait for IDOT. In which case, and I'm not speaking for anybody, but. If I was in their position, I would seriously consider walking away from the project entirely because it could be several years before they even uh, negotiate. That, Dan. That's I, I'm, I'm just, just so, so everybody understands. When this started in, what, a year, year and a half ago, 
when we approved that they can come in there and Popeye's backed out, but Starbucks, where was that process for the, the your owners and everything? Where was that process to working with every government? That was a completely different project. It was what a much more intense project with two users, two drive throughs uh, McGuire, uh, MDOT was requiring a turn lane. It was a completely different project, different intensity. Did it have sidewalks? Uh, that project did have sidewalks, yeah. considering we were doing right-of-way work with adding a turn lane on both uh, McGuire and redoing the work on Route 14. Excuse me, so Route I 14. Did I approve the sidewalks? For we didn't that. get to that point. So, yeah, had, so you had a plan. The project though. died at that you, point. But you had a plan for that to submit to them. That is correct. The plans okay. were completed, um, but the tenant pulled out at that point. So, so just just so that we clarify here, okay? If we were to deny this, and they have to keep the sidewalks, it, while the intent is good, I'm not saying that the intention is bad, and I'm not saying that that one way or the other is the right way to go. We have our reasons for this. But every time IDOT dis denies these projects to move forward because there's issues or they delay because the, for their you know their property their right of way connecting to, to to what they've got, I just want to add without sidewalks, this project alone is six months review with IDOT. Include it if we if we include the. No, I understand. I know the process of all that. How long it takes? I know I not takes forever. I, I was it's, just adding to his yes, state of Illinois. But let me, I know let me how they do it. but let me get to my point here. Okay. We, I understand why we're doing this, and I understand that we're careful with precedent. I'm just laying it out so everybody understands. Every, for each time a project comes in here and a developer wants to build this, and 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 they get hosed by by being held up by IDOT for however long. What happens when you do a business on 14? It's I, I get that, but are we willing to allow 14 to go undeveloped for a decade because we've got businesses that keep getting shot down? It's a hell of a statement. Do we, but well, well, I'm just saying, if, if we look at what the issues we've had with IDOT with just the overpass and all the other stuff, that, that it takes them years to get things in order. It's a, it's a struggle to deal with that. Well, good thing we do, do have we people want, and congressmen and stuff we can talk to and Push it. They've been around recently. So, I'm, I'm just laying out there from a development standpoint. I'm not arguing against you, and I'm not saying that I'm for or against in this moment. I just want to make sure everybody understands that if if we have some of these requirements and we stick to it, the consequences can be that we risk losing development for a long period of time down this corridor because we're of these issues. You now, if, if we're willing to, to work with them on the bond that can kind of make things a little bit easier to work with them. Again, I'm just laying out there's consequences. Business, the, this, the reputation of, of development gets around. If developers are having a lot of difficulty in an area getting stuff through, they, that gets around. And then they may or may not decide to, to additionally come here. Just, just saying that, that, that that's something to keep in mind when we're having some of these requirements in there. I get why we do it, and I agree that there's a good reason why we do it, and I like that we do it, but we have to be willing to accept those consequences if we have issues going forward with development on these projects. Because every time a project gets killed, people know that. They keep track of that. Just Donovan, you might be able to correct me on this, um, but didn't we already work uh, with the original plan when it was going to be a Popeyes as well, that they required a turn lane, but we worked with... I believe it was the county that the turn lane was no longer required. That, that's correct. That sounds right. Yeah. Yes. So um, that being said, it's not not that we haven't um, exerted some sort of influence to help on situations with this um, or like this. Uh, if you do, depending on how the vote goes, um, uh, if you do decide to kick this back over to the transportation committee and go the other route, which is to require a bond. Um, my my one suggestion would be to to put a um, you know a three or five year cap with a growth on it because expenses only continue to go up. Yeah. Well, there's a motion and a second. Yeah. Is there any more comments or questions? We have a motion to deny the request as submitted. Hearing none, clerk call the roll. Alderman Gorman. No. Yes. Yes. Yeah. To be clear, if you vote yes, you're denying yeah. the request. Got it. Yeah. 
Alderman Perkins. Yes. Alderwoman Hatterline. No. Schultz. No. Lavalley. Yes. Concross. No. Lancaster. No. Motion to deny fails. Now I would no, like him. No, no, no. Two, four, three. Yeah, it failed. I would like to make a motion that we send this to transportation committee. I, we need to have a three to five year bond, or we need to have a three to five year timeline. We need to have some type of bond in play. That. So I need to, I need an idea of how the motion should be. So Lou. your motion would be to send this back to the transportation committee to right. discuss an option. Okay. of uh, requiring a three to five year bond with okay. a growth um, attached to it. I, I make that motion. Thank you, Lou. I'll second it. All right, we have a motion and a second by Schultz and Lancaster to send the issue to the Transportation Committee. Any comments or questions? Uh, I just want to say that I, I, I think this is a good decision because I, I feel that may, an, it, it, a denial may be in order, but I feel that the denial at this moment is a little rash. I, I would really like to see more more discussion and on options to see what what other way that there is to accomplish this without it All right, causing so issues. So my quick thing, time. sorry, if this was going to be a thing to go back to bond, why didn't this be brought to transportation first and be here? Because this is the first time we did come up with this, if there was a working thing, maybe we should start at transportation before it went to the full city council and work something out. So it was a timing issue um, to try to keep the project moving forward. If, if it was denied, or if it was approved, if it was denied, and we uh, expressed that, that there was a, a, a very decent chance that it could be denied. Um, but the, uh, uh, the petitioner um, decided to take that risk and uh, and asked to be uh, brought before the council. Okay. Any other comments or questions? There are none. Um, clerk, call the roll on the decision to send this back to council or to uh, to the transportation committee. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right. Well, let's go to the transportation committee, and they can kind of hash it out then, and we'll come back to city council when they've come up with options and recommend you you or a another representative. Uh, so the city will be submitting to IDOT this request, or is it? No, no, no. So this your request to um, re, to re, not have sidewalks well, is being sent to the transportation committee, um, and then my guess is is they're going to work out a deal for some kind of bonding. That's based on the conversation. Here. Okay, so I'm guessing I'll I'll be working with Donovan to work out those terms. Yes, right. Okay. So and I, um, that meeting will probably be scheduled later in this meeting, but it likely will be sometime here in mid-April. Okay. So. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Sure. Have a great night, Mayor. If I can just it, this is more for the general public. It's not that the the sidewalks are being um, that this council saying no to the sidewalks. It's just that. Um, no to the construction of sidewalks right now. If I could. Yep, that correct. Clear? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, moving on uh, to item number 11 is a Class A liquor license application. Um, I'm sorry, 10. item 10. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, item 10 is relinqu relinquish Class A liquor license. Ward Green has submitted a letter relinquishing Class A liquor license from Red Jellyfish, Inc., doing business as Bunks Place, 703 East Diggin Street, upon approval of a license issued to Jeff and Dan Rakowski, doing business as R&R &R House, LLC. Your action is requested to approve the request. Please note for the record that Alderman Schultz has left or recused himself from the meeting. And I believe the petitioners are present, yeah. Uh, if you could state your name and address for the record, please. Uh, Jeff Rudkowski, 2511, Juicin Farm Lane, Ringwood, Illinois. And I'm, I'm Todd Rudkowski, not Dan, so for the record, yeah, it's Todd, T-O-D-D. -D. Oh, that's right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm at 10813 North Woodstock Street in Huntley. Okay, thank you. 
So the first request here, item 10, is um, to relinquish um, existing Class A liquor license. The business has been sold to the Rutkowskis, and they're looking to open a new business in that same location. Make a motion to approve uh, Ward Green's um, request to relinquish his Class A liquor license for Red Jellyfish Inc. I'll second. I have a motion by Hairline, second by Carncross. Comments, questions here? Your none, clerk, call the roll. Herman Perkins? Yes. Hatterline? Yes. yes. Lavalin? Yes. yes. Carncross? Yes. Lancaster? Yes. Foreman? Yes. All eyes, motion carries. Okay, item number 11, which is the second part of this, is a Class A liquor license application. Uh, Jeff and Todd Rutkowski, uh, doing business as r and &R, Ale House LLC, 703 West Dickens Street, have submitted an application for a Class A liquor license and video gaming license. Your action is requested to approve or deny the application pending background checks, mission of fees, and insurance to be effective May 1st, 2024. And I, uh, the DC had given me um, a full report, and I think we're still waiting on fingerprints for one of the gentlemen, um, but so far everything appears to be fine. We just uh, wouldn't issue until that has been complete. Motion to approve, you know, pending the rest of the background check and everything coming back good so second so i have a motion by hat our car cross second by header line uh to approve the uh, application for liquor license pending fees background check insurance any comments questions uh what kind of business are you guys are providing in there is it just like a bar or a restaurant type yeah we want to do like a sports bar um again a uh, location that people want to come to and we're going to have food, obviously. It'll be bar food, but it's going to be very, very good bar food. It's not, you know. So pub type a little bit kind of? Correct. Oh, okay. Correct, yep. That's it. All right. Any other comments or questions? I hear none. Clerk, call the roll. Alderwoman Hatterline? Yes. Lavely? Yep. Aaron Cross? Yes. Lancaster? Yes. Gorman? Yes. Perkins? Yes. All eyes. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Um, we'll Thank have folks. all that for you. Clerk will have that tomorrow. Should all right. Okay. Appreciate it. Very Thank good. You. Thanks. Uh, let the record uh, reflect that Alderman Schultz has returned to the meeting. Okay. Item number twelve is a transportation committee recommendation for the twenty four twenty five motor fuel tax road program. Your action is requested to approve the committee's recommendation to accept the locations as presented for the 2425 MFT road program, noting that this, um, uh, these recommendations are for rejuvenation and crack filling only and did not include stopgap. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion by uh, Schultz and second by uh, Lovely. How much questions here? So does that mean there will be no stopgap? No, what's this left? Year? Oh, the stopgap hasn't been determined yet. Yeah, there, there will be a stopgap. We have about 3,000 square yards of uh, skip patching that we can complete. We just have to identify the areas. Okay. This year, uh, as discussed in the Transportation Committee meeting, uh, we hope to spread the joy. Um, so <laughs> more, more, more critical <laughs> areas throughout the city that, that might not have been addressed the first time um, just because of the proximity of all the patches in that area. Gotcha. So, Thank you. Yep. All right. Any other comments or questions? <laughs> Hearing none, clerk, call a roll. Alderwoman Hatterline? Yes. Schultz? Yes. Lavely? Yes. yes. Karen Cross? Yes. Lancaster? Yes. Foreman? Yes. Yes. All eyes. Motion carries. All right. Thank you. Item number 13 is the Administration Committee's recommendation for the FOP equipment donation. Your action is requested to approve the committee's recommendation to accept the FOP's donation of a Mavic 3 drone to the city of Harvard, be utilized by the Harvard Police Department and other departments as necessary. I'll make that motion. Second. Motion by Perkins, second by Hannerline. Any comments or questions here? I just wanted to add that um, 
The total cost of this drone is $7,202. The uh, FOP, or Fraternal Order of Police, um, went out and did uh, uh, fundraising in order to cover this cost. All right. Any other comments, questions? Uh, I think, you know, going forward, um, uh, we need to be clear with, like, Park Foundation, FOP, anyone doing fundraisers for specific specific things um, needs to be clear to the people that are asked to make the donations that this doesn't just go to that department. It goes to the city and can be used by the entire city because people might have made donations thinking, well, this is for the police department, and it's not just for the police department. And I understand why. I'm just saying we need to make sure that that's clear. And uh, to and, address your concern, yeah. that was very clear in emails to the then president of the sure. FOP that um, any equipment is being donated to the city, even though it might be more directed to a, a department. It's it's city equipment. If say parks or economic development or uh, public works needed to borrow the the drone, it's not being used for an investigation at the time that they could. Yeah, understood. I'm so, just saying these be. I think. Needs to be made clear to the general public that's making donations for that item. I can write a policy up on yeah. that. And it's, so, what's the what's the cost and um, logistics of training to use the drone, since it's a very expensive e piece of equipment? Right. It, it requires an FFA, FAA drone license, which okay. I believe runs about five to six hundred dollars and and eight to sixteen hours of okay. training. Um, that uh, is a significant cost. Um, but that's if they fly it over 300 feet, I believe. If they fly it below 300 feet, it's, it's essentially basic training. Um, but somebody, whoever's doing the flying, needs to have that training yeah, and, to and be able to use it. That is correct. And, and one of the things that... What's that? It doesn't crash in a tree. True. Um, <laughs> or so, a power line yeah. or a house. Or <laughs> and if you um, look at the invoice, you'll notice that it was dated uh, May 25 of 2023. These were issues. This, the, why it's taken so long to come here is, is one, to address that uh, an understanding that uh, you need to ask permission to, to donate um, uh, equipment like that, um, as well as um, uh, Training like this needs to be addressed. Uh, parameters, uh, the uh, equipment needs to be donated to the city and not to a, a particular department. That, that's part of the reason why, um, and there was a little miscommunication um, with previous uh, personnel. Um, and, and that's why it took so long to get to this point. So yes, um, as far as training, uh, that's already been kind of discussed. Um, because it is a professional type license, um, one of the aspects to it is any person or any personnel who goes through that training would be required to be here and ex essentially guarantee that they're going to work for the city for X number of years more to essentially work that off. Um, and if they leave sooner than that, uh, that they'll have to pay the, the difference of that uh, back. And that's because, it more again, it's, it's an exotic uh, type of uh, professional license right I understand yeah just want to make sure that that it's not like just anybody on city staff is going to be able to go check it out and let's 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 jo get some photos with the drone <laughs> sorry Ann yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so with the logo you know I have a little drone instead of a plane <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Any other comments, questions? Hearing none, clerk, call the roll. Alderman Schultz? Yes. yes. Lavely? Yes. Karen Cross? Yes. Lancaster? Yes. Foreman? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Ketterly? Yes. All lives, motion carries. Thank you. Item number 14 is the administration committee recommendation for a water tower program. Your action is requested to approve the committee's recommendation to enter into a contract with McGuire Iron for a 10-year water tower asset management program. Make a motion to approve the uh, contract with McGuire Iron. I'll second. And I'd like to say thank you to the city staff uh, for working so quickly to address the concerns that were brought up with really without any 
prior knowledge, and we got on it very quickly. So thank you very much for moving fast on that. Very good. Uh, we have a motion by Hannah Line, second by Karn Cross. Any other comments or questions? Hearing none, clerk, call the roll. Alderman Lavalley? Yes. Karn Cross? Yes. Lancaster? Yes. Gorman? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Hatterline? Yes. Schultz? Yes. All ayes. Motion carries. Thank you. Item number 15 is the Administration Committee recommendation for backyard chickens. Your action is requested to approve the committee's recommendation to adopt the proposed ordinance regarding backyard chickens. Make a motion to approve the uh, ordinance. I'll second it. I have a motion by Hannerline, second by Lancaster. Any comments or questions here? I'd just like to, to just make a, a comment, I guess, about the um, recommendation and the ordinance language that's recommended is I feel like the committee, and I want to thank Charlie Gorman in particular, but I, the whole committee really did a good job of going through all of the issues um, that were brought up by the community, pro and against. And um, I think, I feel like this is, if we're going to have backyard chickens in Harvard, I think we've got a good um, system worked out. And it's a two-year trial. Um, we we're very clear about that. And that is, I think, consistent with what the um, zoning board was wanting to do, um, is to have a trial period. So um, I, feel, I feel like we've, we've gotten this to a good place. I'd like to say that uh, thank you to Donovan and the city staff for drafting up this this ordinance the way it is. We spent a lot of time on this and it took a lot of resources and energy from everybody, a lot of heated discussion uh, from both sides. And I have to say that looking through this, this is uh, this is an excellent ordinance. It's very detailed. There's a lot to it. But I feel like out of the ordinances that we've drafted from scratch since we've been here, I think this is one of the, the first ones really, and it this is really excellent work. I mean, this is this is fantastic work. So thank you. Thank you for that. And certainly, thanks to Alderman Gorman who put a lot of work into it also. Um, but I did want to say, in speaking with our legal counsel today, this will be subject to final attorney approval. There's maybe some tweaks that aren't going to change the substance of it or anything, but just to clean it up a little bit. So that's all I wanted to add there. Understandable. Ah, uh, yes, you'll need to amend your motion pending approval by legal counsel. Okay, I amend my motion to include that it. Pending approval by pending legal counsel. Pending approval by legal counsel. Uh, I, I did want to bring up, if I, I may, I wouldn't normally do this. Second. Second. Uh, Lori had the. Lori. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Thank Sorry. you, Lori. I'll, I'll second it. Thank you. Pending approval. Uh, under <laughs> item number 11 or line 11 under minimum requirements, um, noted that this is for only owner occupied properties. So I'm not, I wanted to make sure that that was clear for when you're voting on this, that, that that was the requirement that you put in there. Certainly. It, there was concerns that uh, a tenant would only be there for a year, could leave the coop and things behind. We did include in here a variance process before city council. So that would be one of those items that someone could seek a variance um, to come before council if they are a tenant. Yeah, and it's it's a two-year trial. No, understood. Yeah. I just wanted to make yeah. sure that that was clear. Yeah. No, I saw that, and I actually, I it was. I mean, I, I think that that's a good thing to go with, just because of the fact that 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 there is at least some fail-safe in there for renters. I mean, we have a variance process. I mean, sometimes there's long-term renters that are in the property, so it doesn't disallow them entirely. But at least it'll help with some of the landlords in town if having things on their property that they really don't want or have to deal with after the fact. Uh, any other comments? Oh, just one quick one. I tried to get the answer earlier today, but I didn't see it unless I wanted to get uh, verified before I make my vote. And uh, just make sure I got the right one. A D of permitting section B, where it says the initial permit fee of 300, an annual inspection fee in the amount 
as set forth in chapter 20 of the city code. We're in chapter 20 because I was trying to look that up in chapter 20, the amount and which table you it, look at. It won't be in there yet until this is approved and then it will be included, but it would be in uh, section three, the Harvard City Code, section 20.06, building permit fees be amended to add a permit fee of $300 for backyard chickens and annual inspection fee of $25. So if, if approved, then that code section would be amended. Lori would update the code on the website. how much money? A $300 initial permit fee and $25 annual inspection yeah. fee. Any other comments or questions? Any from the audience? Hearing none, clerk, call the roll. Alderman Carn Cross. Yes. Lancaster. Yes. Foreman. Yes. Perkins. Yes. Catterline. Yes. Schultz. Yes. Lavely. No. Motion is approved. Six to one. Ordinance Thank you. 2024-108. Thank you, Clerk. Item number 17 is the Parks and Rec Board recommendation. Uh, sorry, we skipped 16. 16, <laughs> Parks and Rec Board recommendation. Uh, fee waiver request. Your action request to approve the Park and Rec's uh, Board recommendation to approve Harvard Milk Day's request for a waiver of fees for Harvard Milk Day. Motion to approve. Second. A motion by Schultz, second by Carn Cross. Comments or questions? There are none. Clerk will call the roll. Alderwoman Lancaster? Yes. Foreman? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Adderline? Yes. Schultz? Yes. Lavelling? Yes. Carn Cross? Yes. All ayes. Motion carries. Thank you. Item number 17 is the Park and Rec. Board recommendation for the South End Milky Way Park Master Plan. And actually, Master Plan is a bit of a misnomer. It's really the park plan um, for um, engineering. Action is requested to approve the Park and Rec Board's recommendation to adopt the proposed amendment of the 2015 Parks Master Plan regarding Milky Way Park. Motion to approve. I'll second. second. Uh, um, motion by Lancaster, second by Gorman. Any comments or questions here? Uh, quick uh, question, because I tried to watch it yesterday and there was no audio. So I was just going off the the minutes. I know Lisa brought up uh, some good points, and from my understanding is our focus isn't just shifting to Milky Way with this? No, it, it's not. It's for the purposes of the Oslite grant. Um, this amendment uh, will help get us points and um, uh, that will hopefully lead to a, a successful grant. It's one of the areas that when in reviewing uh, or triaging our last two attempts, um, an area that we sorely lacked in points. It's, it's not to um, get away from the other parks plans. It's just to capitalize on an uh, on the Oslite grant another thing on that I saw in the minutes saying something about what well, we haven't been staying on task of the last master plan before I even came on the committee but I think we've been they were trying to Parks Board has been trying to I know one of the main ones was maintaining it and I get with the costs and fees of everything that's the reason why we have the Parks Board hasn't been able to do all the big things in the master plan, but they've been hitting the small things that we definitely told the community we would do if that referendum did pass. All right, any other comments or questions? Hearing none, clerk call a roll. Alderman Gorman? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Adderline? No. Schultz? Yes. Lavely? Yes. yes. Cross. Yes. Lancaster. Yes. Motion is approved six to one. Thank you. Item number 18 is the Park and Rec Board recommendation for OSLAD grant master proposal. Your action is requested to approve the Park and Rec Board's recommendation to approve Christopher B. Burke's proposal to create a master park plan for Milk Way Park and assist the city in completing the necessary steps required prior to submitting an OSLAD grant application. Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Carn Cross, second by Lancaster. Any other comments, questions here? 
Yes, I have another one. Sorry. It's because, like I said, I was trying to watch this last night and going <laughs> off the minutes. Um, And it's down in uh, two more sections, uh, bullet points. But the money market... The money money market from the parks is paying for this right now, correct? That is correct. But we are the grant won't reimburse it. We're reimbursing by selling a vehicle that they just we just approved to buy in twenty twenty two. So the so the um the grant won't reimburse for design. Um the grant is, is really for either acquisition or actual development of um said property. <laughs> So my other question going off of that is, and I guess I should have brought this up more when we it was talked about an admin, what was that, two admins ago? But um, what will happen when we do hire a new parks superintendent, whatever you want to call them, and vehicles, are they still going to use one of the older vehicles? Right now, the, the tentative plan is that they're going to use um, the squad car that we use for the um, in the admin fleet. Um, it's a retired um, police cruiser. Okay. Um, so anything that needs to be done in the parks off-road public works will be dealing with that? No. Um, if, if it's a situation where um, a pickup is required, then uh, we would borrow one from the uh, public works. Uh, keep in mind that we already have uh, one that Dar uh, that's public works, but it's more parks uh, that Daryl uses. And, oh yeah, thank you. We actually have two, uh, one that the part-timers use, uh, the seasonal help, and one that Daryl uses. So there are other opportunity or other pieces of equipment in the fleet to be able to uh, handle a need of, of, of such a, and Daryl's truck came from where again? Because I know we did that, and that refreshed my memory. Yeah, there was a lot of talk of uh, moving around. Daryl's truck is actually still the parks truck. Um, the one that we might sell. No, there were there were actually three. There was a 2022, okay. uh, 2007 Chevy, and it's 27, uh, 2007 Ford, correct? Chevy. Two, okay. Two, 2020, two 2007 trucks, and then this newer one. Correct. So why don't we get rid of the older one and keep the newest one? Because from what we've been trying to do... Well, Alderman, that's a, that's a separate uh, action item that we'll come to. Um, so... Okay. Yeah, you're, you're, yeah that's, a, that's a, another agenda minutes. item. We can discuss that when we Sorry, get to that Charlie. agenda item. Are there any other comments or questions concerning OSLAD? Well, I'm just going to... It's in the minutes, but just going to um, point out that I just I am not in favor of this, and it continues. You continue the language in here continues to be that this is a mar master park plan for Milky Way Park, and um, you don't do a master plan in three months. Um, that's just not what it is. It's I, I, I concur, um, so, Lisa. I, I believe that's a mistitled yeah. it's not it's not a master plan it's a development plan for yeah. this park and it's and it's really just aimed at at trying to trying to get the grant to do something that's not in our parks master plan from 2015 so we're just shoehorning something in there to fit a grant program so just i don't think that's the way we should do our planning how much is this grant potentially for um, Woodstock got a grant for 2.2 million. Um, Marengo got a grant for 600,000. Um, a lot of the what they got their uh, grant dollars for is what um, in the in the past uh, in our two previous well sorry one um, previous attempt um, back in 2022 no 2022, 2022 um, very similar. Uh, it's uh, uh, actually laying out a, a plan uh, for soccer fields multi-use football field, uh, potentially other items like, say, a pickleball court. Um, and then it's also um, laying out uh, a connection point between the north end, northwest end of the uh, what started out as a walking path uh, over the railroad track is to bring that down along the south end. It's also um, uh, planting uh, trees in certain locations because right now we have a small grove 
uh, that's developing where a soccer field could go. So we would uh, uh, take down those trees and, and then just plant new trees other parts of the park. And the so chief we, board would be involved in that one? <laughs> um, that's a later item. But okay. <laughs> yeah, ho hopefully those aren't trees that the Land Conservancy donated to the city working with Ryan a few years ago. No, th no, no. Those okay. trees are um, on the outer rim of the of Milky Way Park. And let me um, clarify, the 2022 Oslite grant that we applied for um, was to complete a requirement from an Oslite grant that we got back in the early teens to get that 10 acres of land that is on the south side, south side of the park, uh, which we were required to actually finish that land, and we never did. That was one of the requirements of the Oslad grant but we obviously don't have money to finish that. We got the grant, bought the land, and then never finished the land. So I know Dave and, and, and um, Ryan worked on that grant. Uh, so I, I see no issues with applying for another, another Oslite grant, having someone professional do this. And this is a point I want to make later on, that I, I think we either need to consider hiring a, a grant writer um, permanently at some point, uh, because the amount of money that we can get into our community in my opinion, would be worth it, but that's for later discussions. So. Any other comments or questions? Mary Nine, clerk, call a roll. Alderman Perkins? Yes. Adderline? No. Schultz? Yes. Avalie? Yep. yep. Carncross? Yes. Lancaster? Yes. Gorman? Yes. Motion is approved, six to one. Thank you. Item number 19 is the Park and Rec board recommendation for programming fee structure. Your action is requested to approve the Park and Rec board's recommendation to increase non-resident fees to 30% over resident fees for all programs. The current fee structure is 10% um, over resident fees. Do we have any data on what the, I guess what the ratio of non-resident to resident uh, participation in any programming we've had so far? I'm just curious if that even exists. I don't believe so. I don't, I don't okay. believe that's da that data has been collated to, to be able to get I'm just curious answer. just so that we know, like, just if we do From, this, like, what to what level of impact is it really going to have? It's like 10 people, 5 people, <laughs> 300 people. I don't know. Just based on more um, conversation, um, I'd say out of, say, a group of, 20 people, it'll affect maybe five, six. Okay. I just trying to just, you know, gauge like what kind of impact it's really going to be. Like I said, if it's one in, <laughs> one in a thousand, it's a. Well, we did um, make the point that we want to see data collected going forward so that we do actually have data. I, yeah. I agree. Just curious if yeah. we had any so far. I, there's a lot of cases where we don't have data so far, and we're just kind of building the, the groundwork for it. But um, I, don't, I don't see any reason why not to do it. What's your pleasure? A motion to approve, I guess. Second. All right. Motion by Carncross, second by Schultz. Any other comments or questions here? Hearing none, clerk, call the roll. Alderwoman Hatterline? Yes. Schultz? Yes. Lavalie? Yes. yes. Cross. Yes. Lancaster. Yes. Foreman. Yes. Perkins. Yes. All eyes. Motion carries. Thank you. Item number 20 is the Park and Rec Board recommendation for surplus property. Your action is requested to approve the Park and Rec Board's recommendation to declare the 2022 Ford pickup truck uh, F-150 as surplus with a minimum bid of $30,000. Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Schultz. Second by Carncross. Comments or questions? It was second. It was lovely. Oh, lovely. I'm sorry. That's, right. that's, right. I, that's fine. <laughs> I don't care. It's one of those guys over here. <laughs> Matt, this would be the place to. Matt, and just, Matt, just a clarification on this vehicle. Um, this was purchased, the whole was originated during COVID. Yeah, and no, remember, remember there was like limited forever, vehicles yeah. available. This was like the only vehicle we could get. We got a four-wheel drive. You remember all that? So I don't know if it fits our needs now, but it, but it was the vehicle we could get. And Ryan's expressed the need for it, so we moved forward with it. 
just that's giving the factual. Yeah, but we and we paid less than this for it, didn't we? Yeah, correct. You bought it on a government contract. That's why. <laughs> so we can make money by doing yes, it. Yes, the blue book value is worth more so than what, you paid. So what are we arguing about? <laughs> <laughs> and just uh, for the record, the blue book value is about thirty six, thirty eight thousand. Might as well do that give with every contract and then put it on go. Well, they go they prevent deals. that. They prevent that. Because then we can be a profit government. And so I, I think profit. this was I think this is a one time deal when we had that yeah. that used new car inversion where yeah. Let's let's not order our dealer plates yet. Yeah. <laughs> Um, just out of curiosity to go with, again, just for people's interest, um, there's good reason to sell this vehicle. Did we look through all the other vehicles and potentially just make sure that within the, in the departments that this vehicle would not be a better fit and to get rid of another vehicle the, in the, its place? The just focus of the Parks and Rec Board was to get rid of this particular vehicle. Okay. So... I know people are wondering because we can make money off of it. So going back to it, so there's no other usage for public works for this truck? Not for this particular vehicle. It, it doesn't fit the parameters of what we need other than for uh, department heads to drive around. And that's that's a lot of money for so just to drive around. A in. foreman won't need it sometime if we ever create that position. We're, we're probably two years out before okay. um, at the earliest. Uh, for that to happen, was this truck four wheel drive or two wheel drive? Four. four wheel. It was four. four. Okay. We could get at the time. Yeah. yeah, that's all we could get. Yeah. But four wheel drive is still nice to have. Yeah. Um, I, I, I would argue that you, it, it's the only one you want. But yeah, yeah, just, yeah it is. <laughs> um, I just hope in the next, as long as I'm on here, I hope not to see in the budget workshop an, another pickup truck like this in here then, in the next couple of years. Um, to my knowledge, we've never purchased a four-wheel pickup truck except for this one. Even a two-wheel drive one, I don't. There'd be no. Right. It, I still would not like to see even a two-wheel drive pickup in here now. Next. At least I got one more year in the term if I if I don't go again. So. I I have to concur at least on the principle that if we sell the vehicle and. Next year we get to the <laughs> and the department's asking for another vehicle. And it's going to be forty five thousand. I I, uh, I will have to uh, call raspberries on that one for you. Okay, just so you're aware. Uh, just keep in mind that this this particular vehicle, there's been some uh, arguments going both ways whether or not this this um, this vehicle was purchased with capital improvement funds that were designated for the parks. So releasing this vehicle, selling it back. The funds are going back into the ca the money market fund, which is their capital improvement fund, and then it also um, offsets the cost of doing the, the design plan, so that that uh, fund is not drawn down any further. So that, that's why this this has been kind of a sticking point and and uh, something that uh, uh, Alderman uh, Schultz uh, mentioned before is making it very clear that vehicles it, they may have been purchased in one department, but they're actually for the city and to be reallocated as needed. Um, after all, the, the vehicle I drive, uh, the vehicle that Ann drives, are, both came from the police department. So this is just it, it, part of what we're doing here, too, and that's why I can't guarantee down the road we're not going to ask for another vehicle. It just This just kind of cleans up um, a, a bad situation, and we can move forward. I will say I do appreciate the consideration for that funding uh, for the Parks Board. I know that in the past there's been... Uh, quite a bit of back and forth over the, the treating the parks as like like a separate <laughs> entity that you, you know the Rob Peter to pay Paul back and forth. So um, I, I appreciate that that, that that's respected um, that their funds, their fund, you know, et cetera. So um, all I right. Any other comments or questions? Hearing none. Clerk, call a roll. Alderwoman Hannerline. Yes. Schultz. Yes. Lavalin. Yes. Carncross. Yes. yes. Lancaster. Yes. Foreman. Yes. Perkins. No. Motion is approved. Six to one. All right. Uh, item number 21 is the tree board appointments. Your actions requested to approve the mayor's recommendation to appoint the following individuals to the Harvard tree board. Sean uh, Kingsett, uh, Shannon Westfall, Janet Hug, and Joel Crete. And Alderman Hatterline will be the chairperson for this new committee. I'll make that motion. Second. I have a motion by Perkins, second by Schultz. Any other comments or questions here? 
like to congratulate Lisa for being able to get this board up and running, the <laughs> amount of time that it took, and uh, all of the hard work in finding uh, the applicants to be appointed. So congratulations on your new venture, uh, <laughs> and I uh, look forward to seeing a lot of good things out of it. Any other comments, questions? Here none. Clerk, call the roll. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Lavely? Yes. Carncross? Yes. Lancaster? Yes. Foreman? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Catterline? Yes. All ayes. Motion carries. Thank you. Item number 22 is a call special um, Parks and Recreation Board meeting on April 4th for candidate interviews for the Parks and, Super, Parks and Recreation Superintendent. Do you have a time on that? Um, six o'clock. Okay. How many interviews? Um, we're down to two final candidates. Okay. So we're free on the third. That the yeah, there was April third is not. Don't have to hold that correct. anymore. Okay. Correct. April fourth at six p.m. Okay. Motion. No, I don't think we have a motion. There's yeah, no, a call a meeting. No wish. Oh, okay. No, I won't worry about that. <laughs> I resent. So, so the <laughs> hold on. So the final um, whoever selected will not be able to start till approved by city council, correct? That's correct. Correct. That would be the end of April, correct? Correct. Are we okay with that? With what is considering the fact that the pool is about to will be opening up in about four to five weeks after that? We've already got the pool underway. And um, I've already started to, to talk about supplies for the pool. So, yes, we're, okay. we feel confident. And, and Jason, with the, the uh, pool manager, uh, and I are starting to work on uh, staffing. Okay, so, wonderful. So, yeah, we feel pretty confident. Okay, we'll good. good. I, did, I was just concerned. I, I thought the, the process wouldn't take this long. I thought we'd have a new – we would be selecting a person today, or we'd be approving the person today. And I'm worried another month, because I know what's involved with running a pool. I worked at a pool when I was growing up. And so I, I know what it takes. So I'm, and I know you manage pool too. So, yeah, okay. So, all right, we're good. Leave it with you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, department head reports. We're down a couple of department heads today, but uh, Donovan. Mayor, City Council, I want to start off by congratulating Ann Nutley, who celebrated 10 years with the city of Harvard a week ago. Uh, we celebrated that by getting into Community Core, our new permitting software, and starting to entering permits and getting the lay of the land. There's some kinks in there that we're working out with Community Core, some things, uh, features that we need um, to be tightened up. But we're doing our best to get all the permits from January 1st entered in so we could provide a full first official report out of Community Core and at the April meeting. So we look forward to that. I've uh, been asked to join and accepted the Naturally McHenry County Board of Directors. First meeting I'll attend there is uh, April 4th. I obtained a certificate in workforce development fundamentals from IEDC after taking an eight week course. That goes towards uh, me becoming a certified economic de developer. Um, that test has a 50% passing rate, so I'm looking forward <laughs> to that test exam. <laughs> With my track record of passing exams, I think it'll be an easy one. The church at 309 North Division Street is being converted into three rental apartments. Uh, that permit is finally ready for pickup after several rounds of reviews. The school addition, uh, the engineering plans for Jefferson School are just about wrapped up. And then that goes to the state for uh, plan review. The city does not have a hand in the plan review for the building. Um, Funny that came up today, Alderman Perkins noticed on a career hiring site uh, that uh, Panera Bread's looking for a manager for uh, in Harvard. So I didn't know we had a Panera Bread. I've been here almost a year, but um, <laughs> so that was interesting to see. Uh, Badger Fulfillment Group is hosting a Cars and Coffee on the 30th at 9 a.m., our local coffee shop. It'll be their first event. They've also signed up to be a coffee vendor at the soccer tournament on July 27th and 28th. So we're excited to uh, get them into the mix, and they're excited as well. The next Planning and Zoning Commission meeting on April 2nd, Greenway Properties will be seeking a variance on several of the lots in Turtle Crossing, uh, something that came up at the last minute. Some of the lots, he's able to move the lines to make the homes fit, uh, which can be done administratively, doesn't require a variance. However, on several of the lots, 
He needs a 69 foot wide lot. I believe he has 67 feet, 66 or 67 feet. So he needs a foot and a half on each side. And then at the next CD uh, Community Development Committee meeting, we're going to be discussing business registration, updated building codes finally, uh, TIF proposal from Tesca for the old City Hall and Police Station, as well as some other areas around there, and then revolving loan guidelines. And that's all I have, Mayor. All right, thank you. Uh, Rob? A uh, report is submitted other than that, uh, mentioning or uh, worth mention the uh, the Dakota that was previously occupied a corner of the city hall lot went to auction. I don't know if anybody paid attention to that, but uh, we got $8,500 for it and it's going to Peoria. He's coming here tomorrow to drive it back. What were we asking? Uh, it was uh, out on auction. Uh, I think my initial estimates was about 4000 um, but the uh, Bidding, I, I think it was at 3,300. Sorry, Donovan, to talk about this in front of you. Uh, it was at 3,300 at that afternoon, and we had 117 bids, and it sold for 8,500, which the city will collect about 7,550 from after fees. So, uh, we will have more stuff posted on on Gov deals coming up here. Uh, right now, we are just getting ready for the spring construction season. We've gotten rid of spoils. Uh, we will be marking for skip patching, and then after that, uh, sort of wrap up uh, to projects going into next year as we will be removing the tennis courts uh, at Shadow Creek in the playground area, and then also removal of the library cut through from the parking lot to the parks. So those are on the short list. All right, thank you, Rob. Uh, Jim's out this week on vacation, so his report is submitted. So I was going to say on behalf of Jim Grant, um, uh, Debbie Bujot and or Bujot, sorry, and, um, and the interim um, Parks and Rec director reports as submitted. Mayor. <laughs> and <laughs> report is submitted, and I just wanted to let you know that the first nine years of me being here, we had about one house built new a year. Uh, in the last month, we've had ten new building permits for new houses. So Harvard's growing. Right. Thank you. DC. Report is submitted. A um, couple things going on. We just put on Melanie Bowden as parking enforcement. That's been on Facebook. Um, pretty common knowledge at this point. Our candidate, Daniel Monreal, still going through the process in the, as far as the background, uh, where the background is complete, excuse me. Um, right now he's on his second of three parts of testing. Um, we will know by the 15th how that all pans out, and hopefully after that point we can make a decision on whether you know we're going to put him on or hire. When's our next academy seat? So he is a Chicago police officer oh, he currently. Is, he is a he, yes, he's a five-year uh, CPD officer, um, so he'll be coming over on a lateral basis. So there will be no academy for him if he pans out. So knock on wood at $7,000 per academy. So. I'm hoping, hopeful. Um, other than that, what I have going on, we had our detective interviews for our detective investigations vacancy. Uh, we had two candidates for that. Um, I believe that the chief will be speaking to them one-on-one -on -one in a second formal setting of an interview. And then we'll make our determination from there. Um, Taser is almost done. Um, thank you, Lou, for your participation. Very memorable. Very memorable. Um, other than that, that's nothing else I have, so thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, committee reports. Dan? Uh, we need to schedule the uh, community development meeting for April. Uh, Jay, do you have anything going on in April that's going to be <laughs> prohibitive? No, just throw it out. We'll... Uh, let's see, uh, the 9th? Um, both my sons are going to Germany uh, that day. They fly, they fly out that day, so I'm not sure what time that is. Okay. Can well we do it the 10th instead? I have no problem with the 10th. 10th, uh, okay. Lori, do you have anything? I'm good. Oh, you're going with the 10th? Okay, we, we figure it's 630. Yeah. Um, I just want to make sure we can go to the airport and say goodbye to them. I'm not sure what no. time they're flying out. So. No. I think it's actually an evening flight. So, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's pretty cool. 
That'll be fun. That'll be exciting. Cool. What time? Uh, figure 6.30. That's our standard time. Okay. Um, Thank you. I would say, uh, Lori, if you let uh, Luna, Rosa Luna know, and if she can't make it, let me know, and we'll see if there's an alternative yeah. just so we can include her if, if, if she'd like to be there. Uh, other than that, I would just like to, again, uh, thank the – city staff on the work that they put in on the chicken ordinance and i appreciate everybody's time and energy that we put into that i know that we were trying to find a good balance that was a, a compromise between the, the the fours and against and I, I do feel like we found a very very good uh, middle ground that made a lot of people happy for both got everybody at least something that they wanted so um i think that was a testament to uh this body's ability to to handle a, a difficult subject and uh, come up with something that we can be proud of as, as a as a work uh, so thank you that's all i had all right john um just uh real quick i was at the uh library's uh, meeting last thursday um i just wanted to tell rob they're, they're planning on getting their parking lot done mid-august so it was done before then um Barricades or curb or whatever you want to fill in. Um, that's is it okay, Jane? Uh, February two thousand nine, I left Motorola, and when I left Motorola. I told my wife, I think I should get involved in the city. I talked to uh, the, for the mayor at the time, uh, Jay, Noling, Jay Nolan, and uh, was put on the events committee. That fall, we started movie night, and I've been running it for 15 years. And April will be my last one I'm doing and passing it off to someone else. But I want to thank Lori Moeller, who has been my trusted assistant behind the scenes, printing out flyers and and uh, posters and everything since that time and handling the licensing fees and everything. So uh, the, all 15 years she's been there to help me. So thank you very much, Lori. I appreciate it. Um, I have a resident. Yeah. I have a resident who contacted me. I don't want to give his name, but I told him I would bring this up in the meeting. Uh, he has lived in Harvard for, I, you know, I don't even know if he's, I think he's from Harvard. Uh, he built a, a business out on um, division. I think it's a division. Uh, oh, no, Diggins, I'm sorry, on Diggins, uh, just passed the container company, did that in 1983. In 1988, the city made it illegal to burn leaves in the city. Um, and since that time, uh, MDC or whoever it was has picked up leaves from his property. They won't do it anymore. Our contract says they don't have to do it. Um, but for some reason, they were doing it. They did it all the way up until the fall of this past year. So um, I spoke to Dave Nelson, and Dave Nelson said that he doesn't believe that our previous contract said that they had to do it. So I don't know why they're doing it, but he's rather upset that they're not doing it. So um, I don't know what uh, remediation we have for him or how we can help them, but I kind of want to pass this on to Lou. Lou, I'll give you uh, his information if you could at least talk to him. Um, I don't know what he can do. I mean, he, he I mean, this is you know, someone who's lived in Harvard for for years, run a business in Harvard for years, and, um, you know, planted trees all of his property for beautification and uh, was always bringing them to the curb and they would get picked up and they're not getting done anymore. The, the, uh, our, our, whoever it is doesn't want to do that now. So, and they don't have to buy our contract. Looking at our contract, it says it's only, you know, personal, it's only for personal property, not for business. And I understand that, but it's just very strange that they were doing it all the way up until April of, or I'm sorry, August of last year. They actually did the first pickup for him, but not the second. And that's when he started talking to them. And um, I'm not quite sure what happened or why, but Lou, I'll pass everything on to you. And I know you've talked to him already once, but I, I, you know, I don't know if there's something that, I don't, I don't know what we can do for him. There might not be anything we can do for them. I mean, as a business owner, I don't expect that to happen for me. I would, you know, pay someone to do my landscaping and take care of that for me. We have someone that mows, you know, but I'm sure that maybe he maybe he takes care of his property and that's understood. So uh, other than that, um, again, thank you to Lori. Um, 
I can't believe 15 years have gone by that fast, but it's been a wild ride. We've, the movie was always at Jefferson. I think they're going to move it to, uh, I mean, I'm doing the last two at the library because of licensing issues, uh, and I think it'll work out fine, and, and the, someone else at the radio station is going to take over for me. So 15 years is enough. I've, 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 I have time to wipe the slate. So thank you. Thank you. Lisa? Um, so we need to set an admin committee date which normally would be on the 10th but that's the Does community development <laughs> meeting I'm sorry one shift that they always attend so um, we could do Thursday the 11th uh, Wednesday 17th what works for you Matt I'm okay with the 11th. Knock it out the two for my meetings the two days in a row. I mean, works for me. I know uh, Matt. Your schedule is the one that's more contentious for that. Yeah, I would say the 17th would be better. Huh? Does that work for you, Dan? Charlie? No. I'll make yeah. it work. That's fine. And then is. Since I'm new, I'm not into the routine. Is the park board meeting always the third Monday? So it'll be the 15th at 7. Six. At 6. Okay. 6. Okay. What time is the admin okay. meeting? 6.30. Okay, thank you. 6.30 on the 17th. Okay. just wanted to get it in my calendar. Thank you. That's it. Okay, thanks. Uh, no Rosa tonight. Matt, have anything for the council? Uh, let's, I must have missed the, anything with the gaming fees. We wanted to make sure that it was drafted. First um, before? Correct. Okay. And we didn't have enough time between the, the chicken ordinance and everything else. Okay, I was just making sure so, I didn't miss it in here. Or yeah, it was it the, wasn't. And, and, or the consent agenda, and then I just... Yeah. Uh, it, didn't, it was not on this agenda, right. but that data was what you asked for. So yep, I just wanted to make sure. Yep. It'll be on next city council's agenda. I did have a correction for that, by the way. I think Woodstock's is 500. When I looked, when I went to their city website, it's it said $500. So. This was uh, what we had collected up until um, today. Okay. So I Maybe I looked in the wrong place. But, you know. No problem. Well, yeah. what I, I can it doesn't really that. matter. I, I mean, you know, there's no way they're charging $100 going forward. <laughs> so. So I can verify uh, w uh, these numbers as well as try to get a few more. Yeah. Anything else? No, nope, that's it. Thank okay. you. Charlie? I guess we need to um, set a transportation meeting date. We did in the last meeting. We did? Yep. Well, that's not going to give. Um, we want to postpone that, though, and move it because... Uh, if we're going to be discussing this bond, you know, for the, the I don't committee. think they can. Yeah, that'd be a pretty quick turnaround. Yeah. How about the week of the 22nd? Anything in there? City Council. Oh, yeah. yeah. We don't want to do that. Okay, how about um, 18th? That work? Not a problem. Uh, for, for me, me but may not need to. Okay. Are you, Charlie, are you looking to have the whatever recommendation from the committee to the April city council meeting? I just want to make sure that if that's the intent, that we have enough time between the committee meeting and staff to have it on the agenda in time. <laughs> we do the ninth. I can't do the ninth. Yeah, I can do the eleventh. You can, you say? Oh, yeah, I can. Yeah. Leagues are done finally <laughs> at that point. Lisa? Oh, you're not on it anymore. No. <laughs> John? And you you're still okay with you? I probably won't be there. I'll probably take my uh Daughter to practice for softball. Okay. 
Any other suggestions? Eighth, eighth or the fifteenth? The fifteenth is. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, Our spring. Sixteenth. Sixteenth. Yeah. Monday the eighth. Yeah, it's okay with me. Yeah, I can make that work. It's fine. Yep. We can all talk about the eclipse. <laughs> well, I might be in Michigan for that, but yeah, it's supposed to go over there. You go. <laughs> Sorry, I brought that up. Um. So what what what's left? What 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 other agenda items do we need, Rob, for that? What are the, the agenda items? If it's just the bond discussion, that's all. That's the only thing that I've got. Yeah. You don't need to be there for that, do you, Rob? Why, why did we originally have a meeting on the third? If, if I can't remember. I thought there was other stuff too. That's why we did another one. I can work with Rob as well to figure out as far as well, if you want. If we, if we want to have a meeting on the third, we could discuss it. Maybe we wouldn't get it done, but you know, or maybe they wouldn't be able to. Donovan, are you able to be there for the third? Yeah. You know, just looking for some advice. I mean, how do we shape this? I don't. Yeah, let's leave it on the third then. Yeah, let's do it on the third. The thing I'm doing is working with our engineer to see some standard sets for holding a bond and right. Uh, yeah. his, his thoughts. You know, on, on how long IDOT might take and some configurations that may be possible. So I think we can pull that off. Okay, thank you. Okay, 630, uh, April 3rd, transportation. A lot of back and forth to end up back where we started. <laughs> I don't have any. Here we go else. around again. <laughs> okay. Uh, Lori, do you have anything tonight? I'm just happy we finally found a solution to the chickens. <laughs> Indeed. All right. Um, Treasury reports already been asked, submitted. Attorney's report. No report. No report. Administrator's report. So the only thing I wanted to add, um, and, and I've talked about it in, in, in various committees, is that our, our focus um, as we move forward as, as far as with staff and, and planning is more data collection. Um, and, and a lot less of, well, I think this is what happened. Um, so I hope I, I, I answered uh, some concerns on that and so that it, the, the council is aware that is our focus, um, as well as um, uh, you, you've heard as far as training, we've got uh, staff members that are progressing um, through their training, and uh, we're already starting to reap some of the benefits of that. Um, and that's where it's a, it's a good thing, and, and uh, I thank the council for um, last year when we did the budget, uh, making sure that we had funds um, in the training budget and then uh, in this current uh, budget year, uh, sorry, 24-25 uh, budget year, to make sure that we have training uh, funds in there to continue to grow our staff. Um, again, it, it just uh, reaps benefits for the city as well. Um, that's all I have. All right, thank you. Clerk's report. I just have upcoming meeting dates, Mayor. Tuesday, April 2nd, we have the Planning and Zoning Commission. Meeting at 7 p.m. Wednesday the 3rd, Transportation Committee at 6.30. Thursday the 4th, there's a Special Parks and Recreation Committee meeting at 6. Wednesday, April 10th, is Community Development at 6.30. Park Board is Monday, April 15th at 6 p.m. Administration Committee meeting is Wednesday the 17th at 6.30 p.m. Our next regular and year-end City Council meetings will be on April 23rd at 7. <laughs> That's all I have tonight, Mayor. All right, thank you. For the mayor's report tonight, um, I, I did want to touch on a comment you made earlier about uh, grant writing. Um, the city, uh, especially for roads, right, you know, we have the most grants in process than we've ever had. Mm -hmm. And as been indicated by our engineer, like they've never seen us have so many grants. I do agree that it would be in the city's best interest to hire a grant writer but we did not budget for that this year. But I, you know, had conversations with Lou that I, I have a huge desire for us to uh, have a grant writer on staff. Um, 
we are trying to explore maybe opportunities to share grant writing with other communities. The problem with that, though, is um, if you're competing for the same grant, that's not always such a good thing. So uh, I think we're going to have a proposal for council next uh, fiscal year on how we might be able to um, obtain a grant writer that is part of our staff. Because I think uh, if we had someone, we would have better chance of, of obtaining the grants we apply for uh, with someone who is um, well versed on how to apply for grants and ensure that they're written in such a way that it makes us as most competitive as possible. In Indy, and, 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 and competitive, compliant, and all the things that are required for um, being awarded a grant. So uh, my anticipation is next fiscal year we'll have a proposal for city council on how to add someone to staff to do that. Um, did want to make mention that uh, we went through several candidates for the Parks and Recreation Superintendent and have narrowed that down now to two forward for those two to go to the Parks and Recreation Board uh, next month uh, to get their um, questioning in and then anticipate appointing that person uh, at the April City Council meeting for starting shortly thereafter. Uh, we have new staff on board for the water billing clerk has started and she seems to be working out quite well and we have an anticipation of hiring um, a new front desk clerk later this summer. We've already did interviews for that and, and we've identified a person to fulfill that role, but we're not ready to bring them on because it's a bit early. So uh, they, are, they have um, consented to taking and accepting the position, but it won't start, I think, until June 3rd. So um, we're, as far as staffing in the administration department, I think we're pretty set for uh, the foreseeable future. That's all I have to Who's know. the water billing clerk? What's her name? So, uh, her name is Ruby Vega. Okay. And uh, for some of the, the council members who aren't aware, um, there's a, despite my best uh, pleading, uh, someone is trying to uh, retire in September, which leaves a hole in our uh, administrative assistant position. Um, and so uh, the goal with, the, as the mayor indicated, um, we have Ruby that's in. We have another person that's uh, lined up to start June 3rd in Jeanette's current position. And then when that happens, Jeanette will spend a few days to help train them, but then we'll shift over and, um, and become the uh, next administrative assistant and start training for that and then to be the deputy clerk. And then that's all pending um, the referendum that, uh, that I asked uh, earlier. Um, if that passes, and maybe Jeanette will end up being our clerk. We'll just take the two positions and merge them into one. All right, with that, I'll accept the motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion by Carncross, second by Perkins. Clerk, call the roll. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Good night. <laughs>